Hi, I'm Owen from REST Australia. Thanks for tuning in to the REST Network. Before we get into today's show, there are a few things we have to go over. Firstly, what you're about to hear and see is limited to general information only. It's not personal financial advice like you'd get from a financial planner. Also, it's important to remember that past performance is not indicative of future performance. That means that anything that's happened in the past, or we say today, is not necessarily going to reflect what happens in the future. Lastly, please consider that any of the guests or myself are featuring on this program may have a financial interest in some of the products or shares mentioned. That's enough from me. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Kate Campbell, welcome to this episode of the Australian Finance Podcast. It is wonderful to be back on for this bonus episode. And today we're going to give you five ways to improve your financial habits in 2022 that are going to set you up for success. Whoa. Yeah, it's quite a pitch. Okay, so 15 minutes, five habits. Let's start with what is a habit? Yes, so using a definition because we didn't make this stuff up, but in psychology, a habit is any regularly repeated behavior that requires little or no thought and is learned rather than innate. And this is developed through reinforcement and repetition, and that is from the Britannica Dictionary. One of my favorite dictionaries, if I do say so myself. Yes. Um, But habits are really important to form, right? We talk about We've, there are many quotes. One of my favorite is, the chains of habit are too light to be felt until they're too heavy to be broken, meaning that once you form them, they tend to stick around. And that's my kind of gripe with a lot of longer term goals is that it's kind of like way off there in the distance and it doesn't come into your daily routine unless you make them micro goals. Yeah. And we talk a lot about the things, the habits we want to break. We want to stop spending money. We want to stop impulse buying. We want to Uh, stop eating out as much. But we want to talk about these positive habits that we can add to our life that are really going to supercharge our financial future. And also just makes life a little bit simpler because you're not having to rethink these financial decisions on a regular basis. Mm. And one of the things that um, we know is that when it comes to money, habits tend to trump like those longer term goals just because they are repeatable and you can fine tune them. Uh, and they tend to stick around. They tend to inform other parts of your life as well. You know, if you are mindful of money every single day, if you have a ritual or a habit, uh, that can then inform other parts of your life as well. And it, it's it's money is one of these topics that it makes a lot of sense to have habits around. So, Kate, let's try and forge some habits or give people the kind of the, the I guess the fire to go on and to pick one of these or all of these to incorporate into their daily routine. And then we can share kind of some hacks to to make it like supercharge. Awesome. So the very first one, and it will come as no surprise to regular listeners of the podcast, is to automate your savings and investment goals. Now, we talk about this a lot and a lot of people have probably heard this idea, so it won't be a new concept, but often we need a few nudges before we actually go and set up these automations in our bank accounts or in our investments. So we want to take away friction when it comes to building positive steps for our financial future and add friction when it comes to things like Apple Pay and online shopping. So what are some practical ways we can do that? We can set up, if we have a savings goal, say we want to save $1,000 for a holiday. Okay. If we're going to save this over 10 months, we're going to set up an automated savings uh, transfer from our the money our salary comes into of $100 will automatically go mm. into our savings account uh, once we're paid every month. And it's uh, you can do this. You don't need a fancy bank account. You can do this with any bank. Yesterday, I set up uh, a recurring BPAY once every month uh, with ING. You yep. can do it with any bank. But you can also do this with your investing, Kate. And that's the big one that we always talk about is automated investing, dollar cost averaging, all of those kind of buzzwords that are very simple, even though it sounds like jargon, very, very simple to do. How can we do this with investing? Yes. So, one way is using a platform like Perla. Disclosure, they are sponsor of the show. They allow you to automate your investments so you can set up that once your account hits this amount, it's automatically invested in your chosen ETF portfolio on a monthly or however often basis. Mm -hmm. Or um, because a lot of platforms haven't quite got to this point yet, but I think it will come, um, you can automatically transfer amount into your investment savings account mm-hmm. on a, a monthly basis when you get paid. And then maybe your trigger is once you get to $1,000 or $2,000, you go out and buy the next 
ETF or share for your investment portfolio. Yeah, and you can use reminders, yeah. uh, which we'll get to in a little while. But you can also do things like robo-investing is a great way to get on top of your investing and make it a habit without even really making it a habit. So things like Sixpart, Stockspot, Investmart, who are also uh, a sponsor of the show, um, you can do that. Even we ha- something we haven't talked about as much is micro-investing yes. and roundups with Raise. Um, a platform where you can just extra 50 cents, extra dollar. I think a lot of the supermarkets are getting onto this with donations at the moment, but it's pretty much the same thing. So automation is key to really supercharging some of those habits. Yeah. My sister pointed out the other day that everyone's Netflix subscription just happens in the background without them thinking about it. Mm. It's just pulling money out of their account every month. Uh, So you've got that entertainment subscription. So you want to subscribe in the other way to your investing. So you want to be doing something in the background without you having to think about it every month that's going to be positive for you, whether Mm. that's saving or investing, whether it's, I know some of the banks allow you to round up spare change into a savings account, all these things, you can just choose one of them, just try something, whether it's 50 cents a week is just rounded up into an account that you just get that feeling. It might not be a lot at the start, but you just get that feeling of how do I automate my goals and how do I do this without even having to think about it every day? Mm, I like it. So, number two, Kate, is just having regular wins. And these are important because there are studies that show when you feel good about your habit and feel good about achieving something, you're more likely to keep going and keep doing it. And so, this is really important. Celebrate your victories, basically, and to incorporate that into your strategy. Yeah. So instead of just having these huge goals that are possibly years off, I remember in 2018 and 2019 when I was saving for my European adventure, I never quite ended up going on, thank you to COVID, Mm -hmm. I was trying to save quite a lot of money. And so at the time, that was a huge amount. I never really saved that amount because I think I was trying to get $10,000 for over six months. So I broke it into lots of small steps that every month I could tick off. Uh, I'd saved $500 and put it in my savings account. And that gave me really positive reinforcement that every month, not every month, sometimes I didn't get there, but I could put that money in a savings account and tick it off on my, I wrote out a little list of like 500 to 10,000 and all those increments. So you could tick it off and get that positive reinforcement. So whatever your goal is, what are some ways you can break it down into really small chunks that aren't too hard to reach? Because that huge goal can feel really far out of reach. But if you break it into small chunks and then every month or every couple of months when you reach these smaller goals, you can celebrate. And celebrating doesn't have to look like going out and buying something. It could just be having a coffee with a friend and actually going, okay, I want to acknowledge that I made it to this milestone and these are important milestones to um, celebrate on the way to my big goal. And that's why tracking what you do is really important too, like just tracking anything because then that's when you know you're progressing. Um, You know, you don't just... No one falls their way to the top of the mountain, as they say. You know, it's a step-by-step process and you have to start by putting a foot down and then keep putting the next one down. Um, And that's the same with finance. So, and you should celebrate your your very first investment. I thought it was uh, really encouraging. I know we've talked about celebrating making your first investment and getting your first dividend before. And at Glenn James's My Millennial Money Melbourne event, a listener of, I think, both of our podcasts came up to us and let us know that they'd invested their very first amount and received their first dividend and they wanted to tell someone. And that is fantastic. I love to see that. So number three, Kate, big three is meal prep on the weekends. A good habit? Yes or no? It's a good habit. It's not advice I take all the time. I haven't- I like it. Yes. I think it is really important. And the times I have taken this advice myself, it has worked out. Mm -hmm. And it might not mean making all your meals for the week. It might just mean cooking- one meal. So you've got a few servings. So a few nights of the week, you don't have to worry about cooking. And especially if you're busy and you've got late nights, you might just resort to takeout or something um, a little bit more expensive or a little bit less healthy. So if you can cook one good meal on the weekend, that's going to last you a few nights. And even another thing I, that has helped is just planning out the week. So what days am I going to be in the office? What days am I working from home? Mm. So I can save a bit more money on the working from home days by making a sandwich or something like that. And then I can keep my spending lunch money for when I'm in the city and I want to go out and have lunch with friends or things like that. So you're planning in advance all of those things you're going to be spending on. Yeah, I love meal prep on a Sundays. The two biggest expenses, uh, two biggest stresses for most families are your rent or your mortgage followed by your grocery bill. Give you a quick hint, chop your pumpkin up into one centimeter cubes, roast them, get a roast chicken, 
chuck it in with some spinach leaves, uh, get some pine nuts in there, a little bit of olive oil, and you can have that for a few days. That's your Monday to Thursday lunch sorted. It is a great one. Chuck some quinoa in if you want to thicken it up a bit, and that will cost you less than three dollars a serve yeah and if you can really tasty put your shopping list for the week together and do it all at once on the weekend it usually is cheaper than lots of small trips during the week where you end Mm. up adding things to cart that you probably didn't need or you wouldn't have bought if you'd done all your shopping at once just three meals think of three meals that will get you through the week uh and you know the longer the better veggies can last a while in the fridge okay number four is having a splurge account this is a bit of a play on old barefoot investors splurge or spending account it's a, the money that we can have a bit of fun with kate how do we make a habit out of this yes yeah, so i feel like there's always this tension between saving money for the future and mm. also spending money because you don't know exactly what's to come in the future and you really want to enjoy the moment. And so a way to overcome this and overcome any guilt you might feel with spending is intentionally putting money aside every month or fortnight when you get paid into an account that is your splurge account or whatever. A lot of people like to give their accounts little names or emojis to go along with it. But this is the money that makes you happy that you get to spend intentionally on the things that bring you joy. So working out what this looks like for you and maybe it's $200 or maybe it's $500 a month, but automating this into a savings account that you can then spend guilt-free on things you love. We talk about, uh, in psychology, we talk about something called worry time, which is your time of the day might be 10 minutes where you can just worry about stuff. And what it does is a habit. It forces you to just get all of your worrying done. And it's a chance for you to psychologically be like, okay, I'm done. Now I can move on. Let's be positive. And you can do that with your money. You can celebrate and you can say, this is my money for whatever. Guilt-free spending. Yeah. That's what this account is for. It might be 10% of your money. It might be 5%, whatever. You can use it, spend it, have fun, build those experiences and don't worry about it. So, for me, that looks like when I want to go and buy a nice baguette from a bakery or I want to go out with friends for breakfast, I don't have to worry that this is kind of an unnecessary expense and I'm derailing my financial future because I think about my financial future a lot, but I don't want to be thinking about it at the expense of all my Mm. meaningful relationships and expense of my time right now. So I want to put money aside for those things and I want to spend without thinking the whole meal, oh, this is really expensive. I shouldn't have spent this money. Mm. I like it. Number five, the fifth habit that it would be really good for people to kind of form. And you can work on this starting this weekend, Kate. This very weekend indeed, using your Sunday nights. We just talked about meal prep, might take you half an hour, saves you a lot of money. What about this one? Yeah, so I like to get on top of things on the weekend and whether that's the meal prepping, organizing myself for the week, cleaning, washing, all that sort of stuff. I like to do that on the weekend so I feel ready for the week ahead. So the fifth thing that I think is a really good habit that's worth trying is doing a Sunday night financial outline and that is – everything from planning your week ahead and what does that look like and what are the things that are coming up that you're going to be spending money on this week if you're going if you know there's a dinner coming up have you allocated some money for that and maybe that might take a bit of a chunk out of your entertainment budget for the month so is there anything you can reduce your spending on else during the week so you might have a few more homemade meals during the week so you've got that money put aside but you don't know that unless you sort of outline the week and look at what are the upcoming costs and things and I used I really like um, on the weekend just reflecting on my week that's been and you can reflect on where did I spend money this week and what places brought me the most joy from spending money on and where did I spend like maybe I don't really care about buying coffee it We Mm. always use coffee as an easy example, but sometimes you just do it on autopilot and it's just something you do and not something that brings you much happiness. And so that might be something you reflect on and go, okay, that didn't bring me, I kind of just did it on autopilot. It wasn't really intentional. It didn't bring me a lot of happiness and I'd rather allocate that money somewhere else next week. And so by looking at the week that's been and reflecting on that and where you spent your time and money and you can go, well, where do I want to spend my time and money next week? Mm. I like it. Spending with intention is what we talk about a lot on the Australian Finance Podcast, and it makes a lot of sense because once you know you've got your jar, what can you fit inside it? Your money isn't infinite unless you've got a money printing machine, which if you do, let us know. Um, You can put the big rocks in and let everything else fall around the outside. And once you do that, by having some sort of deliberate thing that you do every week, 
you can set your weekly budget and you can say, I'm going to spend on this and not on that. And I'm going to get more happiness from that. So aligning your happiness to that is a great thing to do. Calendar invites, set it up, make it recurring, give yourself a bit of a nudge to help you on your way. Yeah. Whether it's a reminder or a calendar invite or a friend that you say every weekend, we're just going to message each other what we've reflected on for the week and what our spending looks like for the next week. So you've got someone to be accountable with or whether it's Mm. a family member or a partner you can do this with, it helps to do it with someone else, but doing it a solo reflection time is also good as well. Yeah. I might sit down with my pet rabbit this week and um, talk it over with her and see what she thinks. But uh, Kate, so we've got these five money habits. One is automate your savings. Uh, Have an investing plan, basically. Set small goals, maybe daily, maybe weekly, whatever. Don't just set, like, I want to be a millionaire in 20 years. Set something that you can celebrate every day. Give yourself a pat on the back. Meal prep, huge way to save money. Also good for the old, uh, the, the, the body as well. Always helps to plan for something healthy. Have that spending account and be okay with it. No such thing as a guilt-free pleasure because why would you feel guilty about being having pleasure? It's a good thing, right? So, and number five is have a night or a day or a morning if you're an early worm or a night owl, it doesn't really matter. Get up, plan your week, reflect on what's, what's happened, and you'll be better for it because you'll be spending with intention. So, okay, five ways to incorporate habits into your routine. Yes, absolutely. So, there are plenty more money habits that will probably work for you and that have worked for you, and we'd love to hear them. So, uh, send us a message on Instagram at Rask Australia. We'll put it in the show notes. Um, if you're a Rask Call member, jump into the community discussion and share there. Um, or you can find us on Twitter at Rask Australia as well. Uh, I like it. Yeah. Kate, thanks for joining me for this bonus episode of the Australian Finance Podcast. Yeah, something a little bit different and shorter. So let us know if you like shorter content. Thank you.